In this video I'd like to show you a new feature within uh, assignments in Teams uh, which is being able to assign uh, an assignment to a group of students. So to get started uh, as usual we click uh, the create button and I'm going to choose assignment. We can put in some instructions. Once I've got my instructions in I can then attach any relevant documentation. So at this time I'm going to go through Teams within the English area. So I'm going to put in a plot summary and I want my worksheet to go in and I attach that as normal. I must remember at the moment that my students can edit on my worksheet but as the group need to collaborate I need to just change that over to students can edit their own copies. I'm going to put some points in here, so I'm going to mark it out of 10. I'm not going to uh, bother with the rubric this time. So now I need to allocate the assignment to my students. So it's going to my English class. At the moment it defaults to all students, but if I click on all students at the bottom here, I can now select groups of students. Click that button, sub window opens up, and I've got two options available to me. I can either manually group students, so I can create the groups here, and I can edit the name of the group, so I can have a blue group for example, and I can select as many members as I need. It tells me here that I've got four students allocated to that group, so I can click create. So there's my blue group there. I can then select new group and I could have a red group for example and I can randomly select another four students into there again create four as you can see as I'm building my list it will then tell me obviously the name of the group how many students are in the group but it also gives me a countdown here and tells me just exactly how many students out of my class I've got left to allocate. I can still at this time edit the group, click on the little pen icon, that reopens it up so I can still change the name of the group and I can also add and remove students to suit. If I make any changes just click the update button there and we're back again but also if you notice just in the bottom corner there I could also delete that group and start again as well if I wish. Not only by clicking on the pen icon here to edit the names and the members of the group. I can, if I want to start all over again, I can then select recreate groups at the bottom here. That will then remove all the students from the groups I've created and take me right back to the beginning again. If I don't wish to manually create the groups, I can do that uh, randomly and let the system organise that for me. So I can select randomly group students and here it will ask me then how many groups I want. So I've got 31 students, so I'm, I'm just going to say 9 groups. So that will then allocate me 3 to 4 students uh, per group. I click create groups. As we can see, Teams has now organised that for me, so I've got no students waiting to go into a group. I've still got the option to edit the group, so I can add and remove students. I can also change the group name as well. I can completely delete the group, but at the moment I'm just going to keep that as it is. And I'm going to say at the moment, this is done. So as we can now see in our main assignments page, we now have nine groups created. I then go on to put in the due dates. So we're going to give it a couple of weeks because it's a group exercise. And we'll put a reasonable time in at five o'clock. Now that I've got the date put in, uh, all I'm going to do now is just assign it. 
I've still got the option to disallow late handings, etc. So I can click the edit button here and do all that. But as it stands, I'm happy to let this go. Uh, allow late handings, particular assignment. So all that's left for me to do now is click assign. The assignment has now been added to the list and we can see that zero out of nine have been handed in at the moment. If I actually click on the assignment, this will open it up and it will then display for me the different groups and the status of the assignment. So in this case, uh, group one haven't handed it in yet, group two, group three, etc. So as I can see all the way down. Once a group assignment has been allocated, you can't go back in and re-edit the groups. Uh, so th at this point, uh, your group numbers are fixed. The only way to get around that, that I can see at the moment, is to delete the whole assignment and, and start again. As you can see, we've got all our groups here. The status is not handed in. I can click on any one of the names and that will then take me into the group work. In this case, it's a worksheet and we can see here our names of the groups. We can click the return on their behalf, but I'm just seeing what's going on within there. And at the moment, as we can see, the students haven't done the work. Now let's take a look at the student view. As we can see uh, within the general channel here, the group assignment for project work Notification has come through. I can click on assignments. And here is the group assignment for project work. It's worth 10 points. So if I was to click on that as a student, that opens it up. And currently we've got the plot summary that we set. We've got our worksheet. So the student also gets to see which group they're in and who the group members are. So I can click on where it says four students here. So the student knows who she's collaborating with. And then as a group, they can then proceed to do the work. So as it's Microsoft Teams, all four students in this case can uh, enter the document and collaborate together on it. So each person can fill out a separate section if they wish. Once the work is done, we can close the document and they can either revisit the work and continue at another time, or if they're happy, any one person within the group can then turn in the work for the whole group. If they decide they needed to add something further or they've forgotten to attach something, like a photograph for example, they can undo the turn in for the group. So let's go back to the teacher view and we have one of the groups has handed in the work. So let's click on the assignment itself. And as we can see, group two have handed the work in. So at this point, I've got two options available to me. I can either mark the work as a group, or if I come over to the right hand side, I've got these the three dots here. If I click on that, I can grade the students individually. So by clicking that, that then gives me a feedback box for each individual student. So I would then work through the group and give Kai a grading, then Stephen and Ria and Susan. As we can see, this applies only to group two, so I can still mark the other groups as a, as a group in its own right. Or if I want to change my mind, again, I can click the three dots and I can then reset that back to grade students as a group. I say, are you sure? I click, yeah. So I'm now marking the whole group as one. So I can now click on any one of the names. That then takes me through to the work. As we can see on the right hand side, we've got group two, we've got the worksheet. I've got a feedback area once I've finished uh, marking the work. I can put the points in, but also here it tells me just exactly who is in the group. So at this point, I can now go ahead and uh, mark the work. So now that I've put my comments on the worksheet, I can give the group uh, feedback and I can give the group the points. I'm gonna give them 10 out of 10. So I can now then return. That then sends the work back to my students and I can then either go on to mark my other groups by using the toggles or I can use my drop down and then select a different group. 
Once I've finished, I just click close and that takes me back. Now, as we can see now, we've still got eight groups to return and that's the work that I've just marked. I can still click on the feedback button, amend any feedback if I wish, and also I can revise my uh, scoring as well. So let's go and have a look at what the student now sees. So I'm now in the student view, and as the work has been uh, marked and returned by the teacher, it's gone into my completed area here. And at the bottom, we've got our group project work, so I can click on that, and as we can see, we've got the feedback and the points. Obviously, we still get to see uh, the students here. The student can open the worksheet and see any comments that I've put in. And also, if there's any uh, additional remedial work to do or they want to add further, the group can come together again, add any further comments, and any student can then turn it in again for the group. Let's go back to Teacher View. We'll just take a quick look at the Grades tab. As we can see, we've got the group assignment for the project work here. So Susan was in the group that did the work, it's been handed back in. So Susan here has been graded 10 out of 10, as has Rhea, Kai and Stephen here. So despite the fact we've graded it as a group, each individual student is then allocated the grade, which is then displayed against their name within the Grades tab. And so to summarise, we now have the capability to bring groups of students together to work collaboratively within assignments and for us as teachers to be able to formally mark and grade that group work.